All right, folks. Um, all right, welcome to chapter five. And again, you know, for those of you who are watching and aren't using or, you know, who need to know a book, we're using Human Anatomy and Physiology by Mariam and um, Hohen. We're on chapter five in the type of system. All right. And again, those of you students who I emailed the PowerPoint to, it would be handy to have this out to follow along with, um, or at least up on the computer so you can just, you know, read and take notes as we go. All right. All right, so this chapter revolves around the integumentary system, the skin, and there's not a lot of in-depth stuff to talk about here. A lot of very basic um, concepts and information, a lot of anatomy at the, at the cellular and histologic level here. Um, but first, I want to talk about some of the functions of skin in the integumentary system. All right, first, one of the functions, I mean, the main function of the system is it's a physical barrier. All right, skin is a physical barrier. All right, skin basically it protects us from um, it's a barrier against pathogens. Okay, remember the term pathogen, things that can make us sick or ill, um, disease-causing agents, and it's also a barrier for water. Okay, now I don't want you to think of skin as preventing water loss. It can help uh, hinder. Okay, you know, to retard or to hinder water loss, okay, because you know that we have sweat glands in our skin that secrete, a, well, you know, the watery substance we know of as, as sweat um, out of our body to help us regulate heat, all right? So, so first and foremost, skin is a physical barrier, all right? Um, now, part of this as well, um, part of being the physical barrier is that there's also a biologic, I mean, everything about this is biologic, but a more specific biologic barrier to this. All right, there are phagocytes in our skin that help us clean out cellular debris, or if you ever have a have a have an open wound on your skin and bacterium come in, there are phagocytes that can help clean these out. Um, also, there is your flora. All right, remember flora. Think of flora as the bacteria on your skin. All right, because these bugs, um, these bacteria on your skin, you know, are normal. We have a symbiotic relationship with them, and part of having them on our skin is they produce a lot of secretions, waste products that they, that they release onto our skin, which makes our skin rather acidic, all right? And as a result, that, you know, the kind of lower pH of our skin helps protect us against pathogens, you know, a lot of, you know, especially fungi and anything else that could, other bacterium that could potentially harm us, all right? Um, you know, also, what was I going to say? You know, another function of skin is temperature regulation. All right, and we already kind of mentioned this, you know, temperature regulation via sweat glands, okay? You know, the nervous system, um, you know, we'll talk more about this when we get to the nervous system, but when we get really hot, all right, the nervous system redirects blood flow to our skin, and then sweat glands filter the plasma, the watery component of our blood, um, and make a watery substance and then secrete it to the outside of our skin. Because remember, you know, we circulate heat. You know, in, you know, that's how we circulate heat is in water, okay, the plasma of our blood. So if we're too hot, we release heat by releasing the water that contains the heat, all right? And this can be a problem, though, if, if we get to be hot and we sweat for too long, prolonged sweating, because that can cause dehydration, all right? That's why it's important for athletic purposes or um, not just athletic, but, you know, if you're doing work outside or something like that on a hot day, you make sure you stay properly hydrated because your body will just continue to cool itself and cool itself and cool itself. All right, so you want to make sure you have enough water in your system so you can continue to sweat and not dehydrate and kill yourself at the same time. Okay, um, another function of skin is sensation. All right, and on your PowerPoint, you know, you use the word cutaneous, cutaneous sensation. This is a word you're going to encounter from time to time. Think of the word cutaneous as referencing skin, okay? So whenever you hear about cutaneous regions of the body, cutaneous this, cutaneous that, whenever you see cutaneous, they are saying skin, okay? So bear that in mind, all right? And when we, you know, when we talk about the sensation aspect of this, there are various receptors in your skin that are designed to detect various stimuli, such as touch and pressure. There are cells to detect deep pressure and more superficial, less pressure. All right, and we'll talk more about those in a little bit when I talk about the cells of the skin. Um, and then there are also um, sensory neurons in the skin called nociceptors that are designed to detect extreme changes in temperature, extreme pressure, extreme mechanical changes with the skin, you know, i.e. basically pain receptors. All right, and again, all these different types of receptors are important to allow us to maintain homeostasis for the skin, whether it's helping 
helping us prevent, you know, damage in the skin, um, to help maintain the regular environment of our skin, you know, all that stuff is important. Okay. And if you flip over to the next page on the PowerPoint, um, you know, the skin has metabolic functions. Okay, metabolic functions. The main metabolic function that you're going to think of is, uh, with the skin is vitamin D. Okay, vitamin D. All right, basically there's a, um, you know, the process of producing vitamin D, it's not, it doesn't take place entirely in the skin. It only begins in the skin. Okay, but um, this is very critical because, I mean, this is how we get, this is our main source of vitamin D is through sunlight. Okay, so we have a pro-hormone, basically a precursor to vitamin D, stored within the skin. And then when sunlight hits it, it, it creates, it, it starts to generate a chemical reaction. And then what happens as, as that energy from the sun alters the chemical structure of that pro-hormone, it is then circulated to the liver and the kidneys where they finish producing the hormone called calcitriol. All right. Um, and vitamin D, remember, is what we use to... It helps us retain calcium in the body. All right, vitamin D uh, it makes it easier for our, our GI tract to absorb calcium and also stimulates the kidneys to retain calcium. All right, so therefore, people that are low on vitamin D have a hard time absorbing calcium, and you'll see bone problems with uh, you know folks that have, that have vitamin D deficiency, especially in kids. You guys are probably familiar with rickets. We'll talk more about that later on. All right. Um, you know, skin can act as a blood reservoir, okay, um, you know, there is a little bit of blood stored in here, okay, but that's not one of the bigger functions um, of skin, but, you know, just know that there's some blood in there, and six, um, excretion, all right, we've already talked about this, you know, via sweat, okay, but, you know, but a, a part of sweat is not just, um, is not just, you know, releasing water to clean us. Um, you have to remember that when we talk about capillaries in AMP2, you guys already, we already discussed filtration, um, the pro what filtration is when water flows through a tubular structure and then hydrostatic pressure forces water out of the capillary or out of the tube in, you know, where to whatever the space is around the capillary. You know, in the body, this is, remember, how we deliver nutrients to our tissues. We have these small porous blood vessels found in our tissues, and as we circulate blood through them, water is forced out. And then, you know, that's how we deliver oxygen and nutrients, okay, to our cells. And basically anything, not, I don't want to, yeah, we'll still have to say it for the sake of discussion. Basically anything small enough to fit through these pores will be filtered out of the capillaries, okay? So that's why when you make, when you, when you secrete sweat, okay, it's not just water, you know, it's electrolytes and salts, various, you know, you sweat out some hormones, okay, metabolic waste, okay? So this is one of the ways, this is kind of a minor way of eliminating waste from the human body, okay? But you know that the kidneys are the, are the main organs that we use to eliminate waste, right? So all in all, these are the main functions of skin. You know, I'd like to list these in order of kind of their, um, their magnitude of, uh, the magnitude of their functions. So like I said, skin is a physical barrier. That is the main job that it does. Um, you know, skin, you know, uh, plays a role in temperature regulation, sensation, metabolic purposes, and then the blood reservoir and excretion, okay? So overall, these are the primary functions of skin, all right? Now what I want to do is talk about basically the, or the layers of skin and the organization of skin, all right? So basically, we can, you know, some books will say there are